Good evening, everyone. Today is Oct ooh, oh, no, October, August 27, 2012. About 8.17 at night, just actually uh, how I was getting Isabel in bed. She has school tomorrow, so i got to wake up early to get her, get her on and out of here, so that should be fun. Um, today was a pretty good day. I, I've been off my meds, everything, except for I'm taking some Prilosec still for my stomach. Um, I haven't been on painkillers, and I haven't taken anti uh medication like the pills they gave me in uh, a couple days now. I didn't have any dry heaving yesterday, but I did dry heat today, so it was a little weird. And then I, my fingers, I'll try and show you guys, they are peeling. So it's like a sunburn, but it's all over my fingertips. So all my fingertips are like that, and it's really weird. So I've been picking at those and kind of, you know just kind of falling apart. So it's like a sunburn or something like that. So very strange. Um, had a couple questions come through, actually. One from my sister, Erin. And then I also got some from a company called Digital Talent Agency. It's DTA. It's a public relations firm that we hired to kind of help um, get Molding Box and myself out there. Um, but they've been they've been fantastic. They actually um, they found out about my blog and uh, kind of asked some questions. And I'll get to those two. I have four questions they asked. So I'll, I'll kind of answer those tonight as well. So that's kind of the plan. But let's get to Aaron's question. So Aaron asked, why did you trust chemo? So in, in my last video, I you know I just kind of said like you know. Uh, you know, and then we just trust chemo and everything like that and left it at that, but I never really truly answered it. And so my sister Erin asked, <laughs> why did you trust chemo? So the the real answer that I've really found after kind of thinking is because there was a path. Um, I, I kind of have equated it back to like marketing and everything like that, as, as silly as it sounds, and kind of bear with me on this one, but um, when, when I found out about everything, it was kind of, there's, they, they lay out a lot of different options, and they say, oh, this is, you know, you can do this, you can do this, you can do this, but the, there, there's a, with, with chemo, it's just kind of like, it just happens, like there, there's a path for everything, you start here, you move there, and you move there, and it's just, there wasn't a lot of real deep level, like, decision making when I originally thought about it, because it was just kind of like, well, yeah, there was, we talked about it, there's some statistics there, but because there was just kind of that path, and it was like, oh, this is what we should do, we should go down this route, everyone says, you know, the, there's chances both ways, here's what the doctor says, here's everything, um, that, that's truly why we, why, at least in my mind, I, I did it, and it's not that I regret anything, or, you know that I'm I'm sad I made the choice at all, but that's it's kind of the an honest answer. And I've been uh, as far as the trust comes. Do I trust it 100%? No, absolutely not. Um, they, but it's it's the it's it's a solution. It is a option. And instead of just sitting there kind of trying to think of something, it it's again like I said, I don't regret it. I don't do anything like that. But um, yeah, I don't I don't trust it any more than I think anyone really does. I, I mean, how how many people really go into chemo or even that are here listening to me go through chemo really truly believe 100% that yes everything's going to be okay because of chemo you know they're poisoning me just like I, if I was out doing crazy other drugs you know but these are just as lethal so I mean I don't I don't think I 100% trust it but that doesn't mean I don't trust my own decision and that I, I'm I regret it by any means I'm, I'm very happy I did it and and that's still where everything stands you know and you know I've been I've been kind of researching a lot and or reading I guess I've been reading that China study with Paula and kind of been going through a lot of it and it, it's starting to just, you know, bring questions to thought more than anything. And I want to, you know, get those questions answered and, you know, figure it out first and foremost, you know. So, interesting. But, yeah, thanks for the, thanks for the question, Aaron. Um, I hope that answers, and, you know, let me know if you have any follow-ups. Um, next is the DTA questions. So I'll answer, ask the questions, and I'll kind of go through and answer them. And then I believe they're going to be putting them um, in some magazine. If you follow our Molding Box page, you'll see on the, I think on the right-hand side of the home page, there's a little uh, like Twitter feed and everything like that. So you'll see these answers pop up there as well. Um, with my blog post, I'll, I'll explain them a little bit more than the, the text, I'm sure. So when people are hit with set, so question number one, with hit, when people are hit with setbacks or obstacles of any sort, illness, bankruptcy, the loss of someone close to them, it's hard to maintain any semblance of normalcy. How important has it been to maintain as much of your normal schedule and activities as you can? Um, I'm actually, contrary to popular belief, I am very happy. I, I tried to avoid my normal schedule. I I was working pretty crazy and having and, and having all of this, I've really enjoyed the time off and, and the time to just focus on my health. And I'm very blessed that, you know, we, we built a company to a point where I, I can not have to stress about my normal schedule and be able to really kind of focus and change the way of my thoughts to my health. You know, I don't believe, I don't believe that normal would have been the best things. You know, your, your life has changed. Whether you like it or not, 
the sooner I really accepted that and decided to do something different, I, I started feeling better. And, you know, it was just, it, you know, more like I could take it on and more like I could do everything without having to be, you know, thinking about my normal schedule and what I needed to do and all that stuff. But, you know, really, it, it kind of made me kind of refocus on a lot of stuff. So um, question number two, when undergoing treatments, making changes, et cetera, it can be hard to fit your old way of life into your new schedule. How have you done it? How can people going through life changes make time for their priorities? Um, again, I would say instead of trying to fit old priorities into your new life and schedule, reprioritize. Figure out your, I mean, there are certain things that you have to do, but focus on what's most important, especially when you're going through something. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm going more on the health basis because that's what I've experienced. I know there were some other things you know about if bankruptcy or loss of someone close, but either way, it's still, it's a new experience. There are certain things you have to do. Make sure you do those things, but you are in a new life. Your life has already changed. Whether you accept it or not, you have to, at one point in time, realize that's what it is, and, and you are changed. So your, your old schedule and your old stuff, I wouldn't necessarily say it has to fit or has to be, you know, done exactly the same way, but, you know, find the stuff that are best, reprioritize, and go forward. I, 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 you know, I wouldn't say do it any other way. I don't know. Yeah, but that's just me. Um, next, let's see. Uh, question number three, you've been fairly open about your experience with cancer, blogging about it, and answering viewers' questions. Has this made it easier for you and those around you to focus on, the, on things besides your cancer? Uh, it has made it easier for me, absolutely. And I feel that the people that want to get involved get a place to do it and express themselves with, and, and me being open and, and this kind of a, it's, it's personal, but it's, it's a way to openly ask questions and openly, you know, do everything to, you know, and get the answers that people are truly interested in. It helps me think about that a lot, and it, and it really helps me. I wouldn't say, the focus of my blog, I wouldn't say is to, to focus on things besides cancer. I, I actually want to focus on it. I want to really experience it. I've, I've, I'm going through it. I want to understand what people think about it. I want to understand what I really think about it. And so when people ask me, I do try and keep the blog a little bit more centered on the, on the, on the cancer or, or something related to how I'm feeling personally, how it's changing my, the way I think, anything like that, just because, again, my, my life is changing and you know, I, I, want to, I want to live it as much as I can. So. I, I hope that answers that question um, about why I'm open and, and yeah, you know, it does definitely help out. So, um, and then question number four, not to be cheesy, <laughs> but many people have said that going through a difficult experience has a silver lining, better relationship with loved ones, more clarity and goal setting, et cetera. Have you experienced any yourself that you can tell us about? Absolutely. I tell my wife actually all the time that uh, cancer was the best thing that happened to me. And it, it, it sounds horrible. I mean, it sounds really horrible. And I know it does. I mean, don't, you don't have to tell me twice, but it's, it really has been. It's, it's really, I've, I've been able to really take a step back and look at, look at my life and really say, you know, what is truly important. And, and really the, the relationship I have with my wife now, the relationship I have with my daughter now is, is huge. I wouldn't want to change it for the world. Just, just being able to see her grow up and everything like that and, and then really experiencing something like this. I mean, it's a, it's a life changing thing. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a whole mentality change. It's everything. And really, you know, I guess it, it's going to make me a different person and being able to experience that and grow with it, it it's, it's pretty cool. And then, and then looking at it, you know, even as a business sense and stuff, it's made me really step back and not work day in and day out and really try and focus and say, how can we as a group, you know, move this forward and really start relying on, you know, the team and relying on a lot of other things. It's been, it's been really nice to see all that, you know, and so it's been, yeah, there's definitely a silver lining. I, I think there's, there's always a way to look for a silver lining as well. I mean, it's, it's like you kind of ask, you know, people always say they do and, you know, you can, you can always look at the negative and you can always try and find the storm clouds and you can always try and find it. And it's there. It's absolutely there. I mean, you'll always find the shit that's, that's there, but, you know, if, if you really look for, I mean, there, there's always a, there's always a light. There's always something out there. There's always, you know, the, the thing that has improved and you know we, we, we've started changing the language kind of the way that me and my wife talk Paula um, we, we kind of we stop saying you know, oh well you have cancer you have this disease or something like that or you know that this really sucks or anything like that we uh, you know we kind of changed to you know this is just an opportunity to to learn ourselves better this is an opportunity for growth and every time we run into challenges or run into something we always if we look at it as an opportunity for growth or for something better it always ends up better and so you know for us it's you know there, there's always the odds there's always the stuff that could happen or you know there that you know whatever I could die or I could you know live for a billion years whatever it is but you know it, it definitely if you if you focus on the good part of it I mean that's what's gonna that's what's gonna come and you know it's it's a it's a unique experience and I'm, I'm very very happy I actually get to go through it it sucks going through it I'm not not trying to lie about that that sucks I mean it's 
it's no fun to go through this crap. It, I mean, it's just the weird things that happen now, and you know, just feeling weak and everything like that. It, it sucks physically, but I mean, just the 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 the, the opportunity to really grow like that, to experience something that not a lot of people get to experience, and and then to have I, I, I have a pretty good mentality. I like I always I try and always be positive and stuff, and and I always tell other people too. Yeah, I tell my wife this too. You know, if it was going to happen to someone, it might as well have happened to me. You know, I, I'm probably one of the best people for this to happen to, just because I can go I can roll with the punches very well. So. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's been a blessing in disguise for sure. So, um, John Hall, thank you very much for everything you do and all the whole team over there at DTA. Like I said, I'm going to follow our blog for, or follow the Molding Box site if you want. Um, and they, they'll have like, you know, stuff that I talk about or Matt and everything like that. So pretty interesting. But um, again, thanks and have, hope everyone has a fantastic day.